Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for waiting. My name is Ellie Garrity, the manager of alumni career programs with the Alumni Association. We are excited that you are able to join us for today's webinar, Shedding the Weight, presented by Aurelia Michael. This webinar is part of the Alumni Association's professional development webinar series in which we hope to provide thought-provoking and valuable content that will help alumni like you achieve your personal and professional goals. If you know any fellow Terps that may have a great topic to present on or you yourself would like to present on one of our webinars, please let me know. Okay, we have a lot of information to cover today, but we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. Feel free to submit any questions you have using the question box located in the GoToWebinar control panel. Now about our presenter. New York City-based artist and coach Aurelia Michael has always possessed an undeniable passion to help others achieve their goals and maximize their strive for greatness. As a dual degree graduate from the University of Maryland and image consulting certification from the Fashion Institute of Technology, Aurelia combines her real world experience with learned scholastic techniques. This unique mix allows her to provide clients with an experience customized to their needs. Since 2011, Aurelia has helped an array of individuals ranging from preteens to seniors by way of private coaching, group web chats, company seminars, and much more. Today, she has expanded her practice to motivational coaching, image consulting, strategic branding, and keynote speaking and workshops. Aurelia continues to be a living representation of her motto, confidence wakes one up every morning with a pursuit of purpose, a desire for growth, and a drive towards greatness. So let's be great. And with that, we will get started. Aurelia, feel free to take it away. Hello, everyone. I want to first say thank you so much to the Alumni Association for this opportunity. Speaking has been a passion of mine for years, aside from my artistic side. And I want to thank you all for your time, whether you're at your desk, you're on a lunch break or on your couch. I know that time is valuable and a lot of people say time is money, but I believe that time is more important than money because you can't get it back. So I appreciate that you're spending this hour with me. Again, my name is Aurelia Michael. Uh, my company is called Confidence is Key, key standing for knowledge, evaluation, and experimentation, knowing who you are in this moment, evaluating whether the things you're doing, the people you're around are an asset or liability to your growth, and then experimenting and trying new things. And I'm super excited to be with you this morning. And I'm used to seeing people's faces and showing mine, but I put this picture here because uh, I'm in sunny Los Angeles and I do not look like this at nine o'clock in the morning so sorry to say so I hope you enjoy my presentation so next up about me I know we just went through my bio um, I love visuals but I will be honest in saying that I am not that visually creative so I do the keep it simple method when it comes to PowerPoint so although I can't hear you possibly laugh or respond to the things I say I really hope you enjoy this presentation so a bit about me um, I have apparently been serving drama since 1985 as you can see in that first photo I was raised, uh, born and raised in the Boogie Down Bronx, New York, which is, yes, how we're taught to say it. Uh, obviously, I went to the University of Maryland. I double majored in dance and business management. And then when I moved back to New York, I got my certificate in image consulting at the Fashion Institute of Technology. I became, oh, it sounds a little bit like New York in LA already. So life, I've been life coaching since 2011, as well as being a professional dancer. And then I moved to LA to do what most people do, most artists, is to make it big. And as one of the few New Yorkers with a license at my age, I bought my car. That's my Jeep Patriot there, Princess. Um, and not realizing that only six months later, I would drive that car back to New York. Uh, when I woke up one morning and realized that I was waiting for a fulfillment that I wasn't getting in LA. So with no theater experience, I had the dream of pursuing Broadway. And so I moved back to New York to do that. Many people would call it a miracle. And at times I did as well. But uh, eight months later, 
being in New York, I landed a contract doing Summer, the Donna Summer musical, which was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. But like many great things, I knew that at some point it would come to an end. So two months prior to closing, I began prepping a motivational speaking tour, which is photo number four, is actually my chance. I got to speak with some of the theater and dance students at the University of Maryland earlier this year. I then decided that there were things in LA still for me. And so I shipped my car back here to LA and now do things in my spare time, as you can see in photo number six, like apple picking. So hopefully this gave you an idea of who I am. Um, I love people. I love helping people. I love helping people help themselves. For me, I don't treat webinars. Um, like lectures, I, even though I can't hear you, I can feel you energetically. And to me, this is a conversation on a really overused couch at your favorite coffee shop. So I hope you're relaxed. I hope you enjoy. Please take down some notes. Everything I talk about may not apply to you, which I think is good because some things you're gonna be grateful that they're not things you're experiencing. But as long as you can take one thing and implement change, that is all I can ask for. So why did I choose this topic? There's a million reasons why, and this topic um, can't be completely covered in 45 minutes, but I will talk about three reasons why I specifically to chose this topic. So aside from spring cleaning, I find that this is the season, December is one of the best times of the year to reflect, to purge, and to plan. Uh, it's the best time to really put things in order and to assure that 2020 doesn't become what I like to call 2019 the remix. Really focusing on how can I implement change? How can I make next year different from this year in hopes that that'll make things better? And this is usually the time when we have the most vacation, family time, friend time, alone time, and we're really able to start our 2020 practices in advance. I know a lot of people like to start on January 1st, but I believe that starting from yesterday is a perfect time to get ready for what is ahead in 2020. Next is the news and social media. As you know, it doesn't take longer than five minutes watching the news to recognize that time is fragile. And not to be morbid, but mere realistic, we don't really know our expiration date. And while that can be terrifying, it can also be exhilarating and just the catalyst that we need to make sure that we're truly living every day on purpose and with purpose as well as social media. I mean, the amount of time we can use and waste on social media, watching others recreated, fabricated, overly enhanced social lives can be spent taking the necessary steps that we personally need to push full throttle into our passions and dreams. My mentor always calls them instigate and fake book because they've become tools that are used and abused to maintain relevancy and to just show the highlights of one's life, but it's not the full picture. A lot of times people don't wanna post their testimony or how they got to a certain place just where they are. And so I want us to be the change by shedding the weight and showing the world what living authentically really looks like. And the main reason why I created this topic is for you. For I don't want another day to go by where you haven't drafted your resignation letter, where you haven't drawn up your business plan, where you haven't set up the phone call to end the toxic, toxic friendship, where you haven't set the date to tell him or her that this isn't working and we need to move on, where you haven't made that meal prep and workout plan that you've been talking about all year, or where you haven't created that ultimate anniversary surprise, et cetera. I want us to think with proactive and ambitious minds and really kick procrastination completely to the curb because I think it is one of the biggest liabilities that we can deal with where we think that we have this time to wait for things that we know are on our hearts. There are hundreds of areas in which we can find ourselves waiting. So today I'm just gonna lean into three umbrella topics. Career, and that's from the corporate worker to the creative spirit love, and not just in romantic relationships, but all relationships we encounter, and then life, which we can find can be everything in between. After this, I'm going to give you eight quick ways to begin shedding the weight in your life, and then we'll get to some questions. So if you have any questions during this time, please already start typing them in. And if I can't get to them today, I'll have my email address at the end. You can definitely email me so we can continue the conversation. 
So today I'm going to cover these three types of situations that you may be in, uh, you may have been in, or you may experience soon. So photo number one, oftentimes we can find ourselves literally or figuratively waiting for the phone call, the email, the letter, and that we believe is going to be the change in our lives. But what we can fail to realize is that even with an awesome opportunity, we are still going to have to color in the lines and create our own happiness. I know a lot of people say often, like, if I just had more money, I don't believe that money creates happiness. I believe that it creates access. And what you do with it and how you use it and how you feel about yourself in combination is what creates happiness. Even though I was on Broadway and I was doing this job that I got in eight months that people were waiting eight years to do, it was still a job. And it came with the responsibilities and obligations that I wasn't crazy about, but the life I was able to create around it and the financial breakthrough that I was able to have made it all worth it. Uh, and my mom used to always say, a watched pot never boils. So instead of sitting around and waiting for an opportunity to come, continue to create a fulfilling life that in some way may bring an opportunity to you. For example, if you're looking for new work and while helping a friend set up an event, you meet the CEO of the type of company you want to work for who happens to be their childhood friend. Or you decide while waiting to join a fitness program and while finishing up a group session, you end up speaking with your future co-business partner. Or even better, while waiting, you decide to offer free consultations for a week to help people privately in your expertise. And three weeks later, you may find yourself with a full-fledged coaching business, which is exactly what happened to me. While waiting for my agent to call and to send me the auditions, I was making sure that I was doing what I needed to do and I just offered my services. And in turn, I was able to create confidence is key. So overall, I'm just encouraging you to take action. We want to appear hungry, but not thirsty. We want to be passionate about things, but we also want to focus on who and what is passionate about us and to always make sure that we are being valued. Photo number two, when we're waiting for the right moment to say, I quit. And unfortunately, that moment does not exist for both parties. Either we wait too long and we run ourselves to the ground and it's hard for us to pick ourselves back up and begin the new job or begin our own business, or we wait too long for our employers to find a replacement. So I always tell my clients that the right moment for things is the moment when you realize that it's time to move on and you have truly identified why. I read a quote uh, recently that said, when forced between the decision to disappoint others or yourself, choose others. And I know that that sounds super harsh, but the world can't get the best of you if you can't even get the best of yourself. So when we're already disappointing ourselves, I find that we're already disappointing others because I can't give to others. I can't keep pouring my cup into others if I'm recognizing that mine is near empty. And then photo three, so I've quit the job to start my business and now what? And while this can feel like the scariest moment of the three, it also can be the most exciting. I really encourage those who may be experiencing this moment to really go back to what it was like to be a child. So children, for any of those that have kids, children will stand on, on the edge of a couch, they'll jump off, fall, cry, get up and do it again. Whereas adults, mentally, we stand on the edge, we weigh out all the possible outcomes, we might cry in the process, and then we kneel down and hope that at some point our body may take over the mind. Let's not be afraid to be students again. I know many of us have graduated a while back, and so the idea of getting back into student mode can be daunting, but we really have to move our pride to the side, grab books, start coffee dates, start websites, looking at websites, watching interviews, listening to podcasts, phoning your friends for insight, shadowing other entrepreneurs, not being afraid to do what it takes to make sure that we are getting started. I think that's the most important part is that when we feel stuck and we don't know what to do to just take action. Next up, we'll talk about love. And I feel like these three photos uh, do all the speaking for me, but I'm just going to say a few words on them. Um, whether you've heard it in a song or a movie or you've read 1 Corinthians in which it says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I believe that our lives are or at least should be 
surrounded and infused with ridiculous amounts of love at all times. Whether that's love for your job, love for your family, love for your friends, and most importantly, love of self. Photo number one uh, can say many things. The person who doesn't feel worthy of love or feels like they don't have enough to bring to the table because of financial hardships or bad past relationship experience or even lack of self-love. I am really encouraged those who may be experiencing this to get off of the sidelines and really get into the game no matter how far you can feel away from love. I believe that love really is the necessary fuel to power so many aspects of our lives. There are people in the world, whether platonic or romantic, with the capacity to love us in ways that will change parts of our world that we couldn't even imagine. But we have to be willing to get into the trenches and endure the good along with the bad. We know that love is a gamble and it is much more like stocks than it is a five-year CD. The loss can be great. The risk can be great, but so can the gain. So we just have to be willing to take that chance. In photo two, we have the classic I call playing the fence. Whether in relationships or friendships, this is the part where we can often prioritize our work or free time over investment in others. We hang on just enough to be remembered, but not firm enough to be a consistent energy in someone's life. And I dealt with this a lot. Um, once I got out of school, uh, my sorority sisters who went on to do more work in academia and I went on to the creative, I found myself only making time for those within my field and forgetting about the people that consistently motivated me and encouraged me to pursue a career that many didn't take the same path. So if you're experiencing this anywhere in your life, I really encourage you to focus in on the quality of your relationships and not the quantity. I imagine most of the people uh, watching this and listening right now are like me. And if you're like me, you are the strong friend. You're the relationship rock. You're the one who appears to have it all together and people will constantly turn to you, not because you're the person to go to, but because you're the person who they can go to first and most likely won't hear no. And for 2020, I really encourage us to not be afraid to say no. We were only given two hands for a reason, so we can't hold on to everybody, so choose wisely. I really believe in if I can have a quality three to five friends as I enter 2020, I have a good, good chance of by within three months, six months, being able to bring more people into my circle. But I have to start by really investing in friendships. In New York, I found it a little bit easier, but in places like Los Angeles or places that a lot of people are driving, it's so easy to isolate yourself. You get up, you get in your car, you go where you need to go, you get back in your car, you go home. And so I think a lot of times we can create goals like, oh, I wanna lose weight, I wanna get more money. But what if one of our goals for 2020 was just to be a better friend, just to be a better partner? Things that we don't know if there'll be a tangible outcome or achievement from it. What would our 2020 look like? And then finally, we have my favorite photo three, which I will be honest, I probably spent at least four of my five years at Maryland doing, which was the juggling act. And we don't just do this with significant or insignificant others, but with family and friends as well. We can consciously or subconsciously uh, manipulate to ensure that our lives can still run as planned without complication. So we're inviting people over to our places. We're calling them when we have absolutely nothing to do. We're engaging in small talk conversations to save time. We're not being fully vulnerable enough to share information that could form bonds and potentially uh, potential for more. And if this is like you, I, I really suggest to take inventory. How many times have you interrupted your regularly scheduled program to convenience others? Are relationships only flourishing if they're on your schedule? Is your time even being used as efficiently as possible? I encourage you to do quite the opposite of photo two and begin to put others first, or at least meet them at the intersection. And if you realize that the friendship or relationship isn't worth the effort, resort back to photo two. But we only know that if we're investing the time. And last but not least, we have life. And I felt like this one photo captured all of it. How balanced is our mind, body, and spirit? 
starting with the mind, because it's up top. How are you feeding your mind? Are we reading books, listening to podcasts, newspapers, journaling, meditation, and even yoga, which is a relaxation of the mind, can be super helpful. I find that we expect our brains um, we expect a lot out of our brain, sometimes too much. And we have to make sure that as much as that wheel up top is turning, we have to shut it down for temporary relaxation. When the mind gets overworked, I believe that it loses full connection with the body. And before we know it, what happens? We get sick. We end up in bed with this list of things that we told ourselves on that Sunday night when we were prepping that we had to do only to find out that they weren't have to do this at all because we can no longer do them. So if you're feeling an imbalance of the mind, AKA you're up at night thinking of tens of thousands of ways to make more money, experience more love, live a better life, really use the tools mentioned to slow down. Let's focus on being proactive with our health instead of reactive. So books, podcasts, newspapers, journaling, meditation, yoga, and beyond. Next is our body. How well are you taking care of your body? I won't dive into this for too long because I believe that this is one of the most apparent by how we see ourselves and what we feel on the inside. In terms of nutrition, what are we feeding ourselves? The, the classic line, we are what we eat. And I say out in LA, are you a Whole Foods or are you an In-N-Out burger? Or for New York, are you a Shake Shack? Or for wherever you are, are you feeding your body the proper foods to create the energy needed for the incredible dreams and passions that keep us up at night? I find that healthy food is one of the first things to go when we get stressed, overwhelmed, or down. If we can begin to make proper nutrition a lifestyle change versus a freestyle event, it's... I don't even know where we could be, but I know we could get a lot further than if we're not making that a priority. Because I believe that we create these habits and every time we tell ourselves that it's okay to give in to temporary satisfaction when things aren't quite going our way, not only will you find that in food, but you'll find that in other areas of your life. Part of why I became vegan three years ago was not just because of the harm and the killing of animals, but because I found that my lack of discipline in eating was turning into my lack of discipline in my career, my lack of discipline in my relationship. I was missing discipline in other areas. And once I began to discipline myself when it came to my nutrition, that started to carry over into other parts of my life. And for exercise, particularly for those who are at their desk right now, who work jobs that don't have them up on their feet a lot. Our bodies are constantly craving exercise and mobility. How often are we giving it what it asks for versus demanding it to do what we want? One of my favorite exercise quotes is, the only bad workout is the one that doesn't happen. And we'll discuss this later on, but if we can really focus in on the now, we don't need to look at a 20 minute workout as ineffective or won't make a difference. Every minute that you exercise makes a difference. $10,000 is just a collection of a lot of $1 bills. So if we can focus in on the now, who knows what the result can be, but it's a lot better than trying to focus on the result on day one. And lastly, we have spirit. How well is your spirit fed? And I find that this one is the most overlooked. The body can be important because others can see it. And the mind can be important because it controls the body and affects our daily walk in the world. But what about your spirit? For me, spiritual feeding is very internal. Daily affirmations, prayer, reflection, celebration, etc. How often are we taking a moment to just thank ourselves for being ourselves? When's the last time you just said thank you? Thank me for being me. How are we celebrating our small achievements as much as we can condemn our small missteps? We'll talk more about ways to re-up your spiritual tank in a bit. But now that we've tapped into all of this, I would love you to just take two minutes and free write about these questions. You can do as little, as many of them as you want or as little, but I'd love for you to take up the entire two time, two minutes. Where in your life are you waiting? What areas of your life? Lift three to five areas or three to five things that you are waiting to do or waiting to stop. How much of each of them is in your control? One, completely out of my control, I am just waiting. Five, 
I am just waiting, but there are things I could do. And 10, it's all on me. And then three, what is stopping you from taking action? What is honestly getting in the way? And don't take a long time to think about this. Usually we'll start to kind of cupcake the answers if we take our time. Write about what comes to mind right away. And I'll give you two minutes and here we go. One minute left. All right, pencils and pens down. So did anything come up for you? I know we have a question section, but feel free to write your comments that we can take a look at later. Um, and hopefully we'll have enough time to go through them. I think we will. So next up, really take that with you. Look at that today. As I said earlier, meditate on it and making sure that we can implement it for 2020. So now I'm going to talk about eight ways to begin shedding the weight. And I put an emphasis on begin because none of these are a quick fix or a one stop shop. We're just scratching the surface while preparing to dig in. So really take your time with one of these or all of these. So the first two we have are be decisive and know your why. And sometimes being decisive is the hardest part. We have so many ideas and things that we want to do. But we don't know where to start. And the best part of life is that life navigates more like ways and less like Google Maps. We will ultimately get to the final destination, but there are so many ways to get there. So we just have to start by picking one. And if it takes us off road, we'll explore where that is, or let's not be afraid to reroute because not making a decision is a decision. So we have to make sure that we're making decisions for ourselves, because I find that when we don't make decisions for ourselves, sometimes decisions can be made for us and we want to stay in that control. Number two is knowing your why. A big part of procrastination comes from not knowing why we are going to do something. Once you've decided to embark on something, really jot down three to five whys. Make them super specific and personal to you. This will allow you to anchor your journey on the days when life is getting pushed around. I know for me, for Broadway, two main reasons that I pursued Broadway, I, honestly, being on Broadway was never a dream. But my reason was my whole life I had been um, in at least five to seven activities, cheerleading, ice skating, gymnastics. I didn't know how to focus on one thing. I, I wasn't raised or wired that way. And so I said, well, one of the reasons why I want to do this is what if I actually focus on one thing? If the world, all my friends that know me to be the Jack Jill of all trades could focus on one thing, what could that look like? 
And then my second one was when I was growing up, I remember going to see Beauty and the Beast and going to see Lion King and seeing girls up there who look like me. And I wanted the opportunity for the little brown and black girl in the Bronx to go on her school trip down to the Times Square and be able to see me and know that this girl didn't grow up in a dance studio, but in the community center. That even though she was in the Clarice Performing Arts Center next to the theater department, she never took a theater class before or even saw a show there. So really knowing what your whys are. Sometimes our whys aren't big enough. I wanna lose weight because I wanna fit these jeans. Sometimes that's not enough or you find a new pair of jeans that you like better anyway. So we have to get super, super specific. Next up, we have be consistent and respect yourself. So with being consistent, now that we've declared the weight shedding and why we're going to do it, we really have to get on the consistency train for as long as possible. As much as we take the time to create our process, we have to create timelines. There's always time for breaks, but as I used to tell my dance students, we can have fun, but first let's get the work done. Usually when we're embarking in a new um, adventure, a new business, a lot of people are going to test us with their words. How are things going? How is everything? Have, what's next? What's new? Some of my favorite questions that I love to get asked, what's next? What's new? And I think sometimes we can get um, emotionally wrapped up in that because we're not really standing strong on what we're doing and why we're doing it and we're not being consistent. If we are being consistent, then our speech is going to be different. Our energy is going to be different to the point where people won't even ask that because they just already know whatever you're doing is amazing. And then respect yourself. I put uh, I put it in uh, as an acronym because Aretha has been telling us all along. It starts with you, what you do, how you dress, what you tell yourself, what you say about yourself to yourself and to others. It's all about how people are going to treat you. We are kings and queens, and our life is the royal court. For me, not everyone and everything can enter my gates, let alone have the address. We have to treat ourselves like the royalty that we are. This will ultimately affect how the universe moves and bends for us. So not being afraid to say how you feel, not being afraid to say, I'm not going to take down my crown and lower myself for anything that I beneath, believe is beneath me. Next, we have speak your truth and focus on the now. So speaking your truth is one of my favorites. I always encourage my clients to tell it like it is. There is no point in holding back and being dishonest because it always comes back around. Sometimes we have to teach people and reteach people how to treat us. And if you're really implementing some of the things we talked about today in 2020, you're going to make some people upset. You're going to make some people uncomfortable because they have placed you somewhere and they don't like the idea of you changing that placement. They're coming to you for X, Y, and Z and they don't like the idea of you no longer being available. They don't like the idea of you changing. So knowing that you can already speak your truth in advance, we have to really be willing to let things go, to shake things up, to get involved in conflict. I think conflict which so many people can shy away from is one of the greatest ways to learn more about yourself, to experience growth in how you handle conflict. Reasons, seasons, and lifetimes, and that can change. I had people in my life that I was like, oh yeah, they're here for a lifetime. And then once a particular season was over, I realized that that wasn't the case. So we have to be willing to let go of things that are intoxicating us, that are suffocating us. And how someone reacts to what we say is honestly their problem. That's their responsibility. We are not responsible for other people's feelings. And as long as you are speaking to people with the right intention and you know where you're coming from is a healthy place, they can handle it. They will figure it out. When people ask me what's next as an artist, when I was on Broadway, no one asked me what was next. I was living in the moment. And the moment I finished, what's next, what's now? And I always say my left foot and then my right, and probably a little bit more of that afterwards. And yeah, it gets really uncomfortable and it gets really quiet, but I don't need to be in a place where I feel like I have to defend myself. We should never have to defend. And one of the exercises I give my clients that you can use is called emotional junkyard. So if you can imagine a junkyard, if 
you've ever passed by one, full of crap, it smells, it stinks, it's useless. Imagine those being the things that you are emotionally holding on to. Who are the people that are around you that make you feel less than, that make you feel like you're not good enough, that only talk to you when they need something, even though they'll, once they get what they need, they'll continue conversation with you to make you feel like that's not what they came there for. What are the things that you're involved in, the places that you're going that are a waste of your time and beneath your value? What are the things that you are emotionally telling yourself? I'm not good enough to do that. Oh, she's really great at that. Oh, he's amazing at that. I wouldn't be great at that. And I don't feel like starting over. What are the things that we're saying to ourselves? Write all these things down and throw them into your emotional junkyard because they will serve you none coming into this new year. And then we have focus on the now. I mentioned this a bit earlier regarding exercise. It's so important to stay still and present in the now, even when we're thinking about the future, because it's incredibly too easy to get overwhelmed with doubt and with uncertainty of what's to come. But I've learned that what I thought would happen, you know, when you try to make this eye movie in your head of what's going to happen, 99% of the time it didn't. So I just stopped guessing. For all of it was out of my control anyway. And all I could control is the now. So staying in the moment as long as you can. I always give the example of like on the train, uh, you have the person who jumps on the train before people get off. That's the person always focused on the future, never living in the moment, not recognizing all the wonderful things happening around them. You have the person who has a bunch of people waiting behind them so they can get on the train because they're so focused on the right now that they don't recognize the wonderful things ahead. And then you have that one person who jumps on the train, gets their bag caught in the door, pulls it into the train, and the train keeps going. And that's the person I want to be, who's focused on the now, but is also looking to the future. So if we can think about not getting caught up in what might be, because things are not going to happen the exact way we plan, unless we are the only person involved in the scenario. And that's normally not how it works. And our last two, we have radical manifestation and bless others. So manifestation is this idea of speaking things into existence. For me, I created radical manifestation, which is speaking as if it is already happening. So for example, when I moved uh, back to New York, as I mentioned earlier, um, people asked me, what was I doing back in New York? And I said, oh my gosh, I'm on Broadway. And they were like, what? You just got here. That's incredible. What show are you in? And I was like, oh, I don't know the name of it yet. I'm just waiting for them to email me my contract. And once I know, and that's the story that I ran within my head for eight months. Because if I had got caught up in this person over there has been doing this for this amount of years, they know the casting director, they have an in, you know how we can start to create um, our own. I always say we use the materials we have to build walls instead of bridges. So we start to come up with all these reasons why we're not getting the thing that we want. And usually we can take that responsibility off of ourselves. When it comes to really manifesting something that you desire, we cannot afford to lose steam. And just like on a plane, when they declare that we're about to head into the clouds or under the clouds, we experience turbulence. It is going to happen. So we have to be willing to be radical with it and know that if I want to start a new business and someone says, oh my gosh, you quit your job. Why? Because I already have a multi-million dollar business and I need to tend to it. So I'm creating my business hours right now. Can I talk to you later? And yeah, once again, we get back to conflict. People are not understanding. They're feeling uncomfortable because you're speaking to them in ways that you haven't before. And as I said, that is truly their responsibility, not yours. And last but not least, we have bless others. I truly believe that if you want to get something, you have to give it. If you want more love, you have to give more love. If you want more money, believe it or not, give more money. Sometimes we can, you know, come outside of the Rite Aid or the Duane Reed and we see Salvation Army's collecting. And we're like, ah, you know, this money isn't going to go anywhere. But I'm pretty sure I wasted at least five, six dollars in the Rite Aid or Duane Reed on something that I didn't really need anyway. So if you want more money, give more money. If you want more happiness, give more happiness. If you want more blessings, bless others. 
Not only can opportunity come from giving, but just the feeling of being valued and being of service to others can get us out of our own way and get away from what I like to call champagne problems that we can often deal with. So I encourage you to ask more often, what can you give rather than make requests for what you can get? And overall, one of my quotes that I've created that I live by is if it doesn't excite you or it doesn't ignite you, don't let it invite you. There is no time to wait for the things that you are claiming that you want in your life. So if you are, someone invites you to do something or and it doesn't excite you, you don't have to say yes. Or maybe it doesn't excite you, but the thing that they need you to help with something and that ignites something in you, oh, I'm helping, I'm making change, go for it. But if it doesn't excite you and it doesn't ignite you, don't let it invite you. Because as I said in the beginning, time is more important than money. Money can be earned, it can be lost, it can be invested, but time is time. We all have the same amount. So how are you using it and how are we shedding the weight? So my favorite question, what's next? I hate this question, so I had to put it in here. Uh, next up for me, I am uh, Miami bound in the new year, assisting a choreography for a new musical. But at the same time, I have a program called the Daniel Planners Experience. This is a program I've been doing for, this will be my sixth year. It is a 90 day program, completely free. And it's for this year, we're focusing on strengthening my vision 2020 really imagining, constructing, and then enhancing the lives and the visions that we say that we have for ourselves. It involves accountability partnering, online group connections, resource materials, et cetera. As you can see on this flyer, feel free to take a photo. It is completely free. You can email us at the danielplanner at gmail.com. These are the kind of things I'll be doing in our um, online group connections and our weekly motivational emails, just really supporting one another Having an accountability partner of someone you don't know, possibly not even in the same state, and making sure that the goals we're setting for ourselves in 2020 really come to fruition. And then let's absolutely please stay connected. Uh, that's my social media, my regular Instagram page, my business Instagram page, uh, my website, as well as my email address. Please feel free to take a photo of this as well. Um, as I mentioned, artist, singer, dancer, actor, coach, I am a life coach and of course I always like to extend myself to my alumni family. So if you are interested possibly in coaching, I am offering a free consultation with anyone listening to this call or people that are watching later. Um, just feel free to email me at inquiryatconfidenceiskey.com. Speaker, if you're ever interested in me speaking like so in a webinar or I love traveling, if you take a look at my website, some of my media, I love going around and just implementing as much change in a little bit of time as possible. And then author, this year during my motivational speaking tour, I uh, wrote a book and toured that book. It's a 30 day workbook called 15 Minutes of Fame, which stands for faithfully advancing myself every day, how 15 minutes a day can change your life. And um, that book is also available on my website if you're interested or want more information on it. And for anything, anything that I covered today that you wanted to know a little bit more about, feel free to email me. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have some questions because I hope I have some answers. And thank you again. So, so grateful for all of you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aurelia. That was such a riveting um, webinar series. And like you said, I mean, the you said you weren't creative with your images, but I would beg to differ. That was extremely engaging. Um, so once again, folks, get your questions in the question box. Um, I have one while we're getting these questions kind of in from the audience. But one of the things I wanted to ask you that you touched on, Aurelia, was um, what you described as the what might be. Um, I feel like that's where a lot of people get lost or get stuck when they're looking to kind of make change and move forward with some of their goals, they, they get stuck in thinking about the what could be or the maybe and, and kind of projecting some of those fears there. Do you have advice or some key tips or tools for people who are getting stuck in that might be area? 
Absolutely. So one of the things I didn't discuss in here that I think is one of the most important things everyone has to have is your village. I cannot survive this morning, let alone the day, without my village. These are the people that have to constantly wake me up to myself. A lot of times, part of why we get stuck is because we're seeing everything from inside the frame. So imagine at an art gallery, we're seeing everything inside the frame. We need people that are on the outside that are getting the full view that can point to something all the way in the top corner of our life photo that we can't even recognize because we're caught in the middle. We're so in the thick of it. So I think it's really important that the top five people around you are constantly pouring into you and helping you work through those maybes, those what ifs. Um, another exercise I do with my clients is worst case scenario. A lot of times my clients won't take action because they're afraid of what will happen. And so I have them write down what are the worst things that can happen. And as long as it doesn't result in death, we have somewhere to go. We have some things we can do. And a lot of times what you'll find is that your worst case scenario ain't so bad. So if I quit my job, you know, that, or if, I'm, if I tell my boss really how I feel, they may fire me. Well, if I'm in an environment where I can't be honest, is that where I need to be? Is that where I'm valued? Is that me honoring my crown? So those are some of the two things that I really focus in on is speaking with my village about my tribe, about the ideas I have and helping me narrow it down and then doing my worst case scenario and recognizing that, okay, well, if the worst isn't so bad, I can still push forward. Let me take one of these ideas and see what happens. We have to be willing to fail forward. Otherwise, we're not making enough change. We're not making enough waves. We're not really stepping out on faith. Faith isn't the idea of knowing where the next step is. That's day-to-day -day life. Really, faith is stepping out, not knowing if there's even a step. And so we have to, like I said earlier, use those tools that we have to build bridges, to build connections, and not use them to build a wall and to separate ourselves from reality. Awesome. Thank you. Those are two other helpful tips, kind of relying on your inner circle and writing down that worst case scenario. I know I'll definitely be utilizing that one. Um, we got a great question from Jamie, and I'm going to break it into two pieces. So first part of her question is, um, how do you determine a realistic time frame for implementing a goal? Great question. So the the interesting part about goals is usually they involve other people in some way. So we, what I find with time frames is that for me, it's my guideline. It's not the law. But what I want to be in terms of being realistic is let's say if I say my goal is to um, have five new clients by tomorrow. Is that realistic? What would it take for me to do that? So I would have to be on this webinar right now. And then when I get off, I'd need to post something on social media that I'm interested in doing that I would, I would have to create this list. Is this something that I realistically can and want to do today? Okay, maybe not. Let me extend my due date a little bit. I always believe in giving myself a little extra wiggle room because life happens. And let's say one of the things you need is dependent upon someone else. If it's not their priority, and only your priority, it may take a little longer. So I think if first you take your goal, your main goal, you create what are the three things, main things I need to do underneath that goal to make them happen. So if I'm starting a new business, the three things I need to do, I need to create thing, my packet, my logo, my website, my business card. Two, I need to tell people about it. Um, and let's say three, I need to continue to be more knowledgeable in my field. Well, underneath those three come three for each of those. So I need to reach out to a web designer. I need to speak with my coach about my colors and the vibe and the logo that I want to have. Two, for the second one, I need to write um, out a list of everybody that could help me in my journey and then put them on a Google Doc and look for each one adding um, where I am with that person. Have I reached out to them? How am I reaching out to them? When do I need? And as you, the more you get specific with what you need to do, you'll get an innate feeling, I believe, in that, okay, this can't happen in a week. This shouldn't happen in a week. This will take at least a month. So I'm going to give it six weeks. But next to my timeline is also, okay, by 
Friday, I am going to reach out to the first 10 people. And then in my schedule, I don't wait until Friday. I start on Monday and I reach out to three and I see where that takes me on Tuesday. So the more it, it has to get obnoxiously specific. The secret is in the details. The more general we are, the less likely our goals are going to happen. We have to get super, super specific. Thank you for that question. Yeah, awesome, thanks. Um, and then the second question is around, how do you give more of something if you want more of it, if you're in a place of depletion? So I think to your point about giving more money if you wanna receive more money, if that's the example we're using, how do you give more of that if, if you feel like you don't have a lot of it? And whether it's money or whether it's happiness or whatever you're really trying to get more of, how? How, what tools do you have to kind of give more of that? Great question. So even going back to depletion, that's the first challenge is that we're often living from a place of lack and not thinking from a place of abundance. I know I've been in moments where I've focused more on how to save money, particularly with money, how to save money than how to make it. And so I was living from a place of I'm not going to have enough as opposed to a place of how can I create more? And so I think in terms of something like um, giving happiness and love, I think we overestimate or we overthink what people, other people need. Right now, I volunteer with the kids at my church in the morning for an hour and a half every Sunday. And though it may seem like nothing to me, I don't know if during the other 22 and a half hours of the day, if they have parents that are listening, that ask them how was their musical rehearsal that I remember they talked about last week. There are a lot of people walking around this world being seen and not known. And it's just that little effort. If I see someone sitting by themselves, I am notorious for this. I will just spark up a conversation. So I don't know what that person's going through. And a lot of times we think we have to give so much, but the thing that may seem small to us can mean the world. And I know in terms of money, for some of us, yeah, that really is not a place um, of abundance right now. And a lot of it, you know, is the circumstance we're in, but a good part of it is also the mind. Because once we start living from a place of lack, we are problem focused. We're not solution focused. And when sometimes with some of my clients, I say, if you tell me you don't have money, and this isn't for everybody, but I say, show me your bank statement. Because I can show you the places where you've made things priority. And if I added this up for the month, you could have paid for that coaching session that you needed to then get started on your business. So sometimes it's a matter of where we're placing our priority. And sometimes it's a matter of thinking that we are lacking. We already think that we don't have enough to bring to the table so we don't even show up. When we don't recognize that sometimes just sitting down and pushing in your chair and showing your presence and giving your attention is enough. And then people are going to want to work with you. They're going to want you to win. You can find yourself asking for help and not being afraid because you've created genuine relationships. Great. Thanks, Aurelia. That was super helpful there. Um, so it looks like we've covered all of our questions, but is there anything, Aurelia, that you wanted to cover before we wrap up? I think that's everything. I just really want to say thank you again to everyone. And I genuinely mean it when I say feel free to get connected to me. Feel free to pass my information on. Um, I think what separates me from a lot of coaches and therapists is like when the hour is done, it's like, don't talk to me anymore. But I am definitely not that person. I thrive in communication. I thrive in connection. It is one of the greatest things that I do on a daily basis is the opportunity to help people help themselves and be able to give back as much as possible. So thank you again to everyone that stayed with me and thank you to the Alumni Association. Awesome. Well, as Aurelia said, feel free to contact her directly if you want to talk um, more about your own personal situation or you want some more information from her. And again, thank you so much, Aurelia, for this exciting presentation. Um, and thank you all for tuning in today. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and go Terps.